Welcome back, WNST, Towson, of Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We're going to be taking the Crab Cake Tour out on the road beginning on Friday. We're going to be down at Lexington Market at Fadley's. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery and our Raven Scratch. Also, we'll be giving these away at a dozen places before Christmas. You can get the whole schedule out at Baltimore Positive. I put it out on our social as well. It's all brought to you by our friends at Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. You buy two, you get two free. Five years and 0% financing. And our friends at Jiffy Lube, who have a big special this weekend for Veterans Day. Uh, anybody in the veteran space, make sure you're getting that big discount at Jiffy Lube and MultiCare. Uh, we're going to be doing it all on Friday and having crab cakes. This guy's going to be having crab cakes because he's going to be coming back to Baltimore probably a little bit more often than he did. Uh, he's a part of uh, something very special in my life, certainly something very special in his life. Uh, and as now, it's all come back to me. You know, I've been having Anthony Mitchell on for 25 years, maybe 24, 25 years, from back in the days at the barn, before he was the big hero in white returning the ball. And I saw all the interceptions that he had as a player. So if you were unaware of his era, maybe that Rod Woodson guy or McAllister, some of those guys, Dwayne Starks that he played with back in our secondary, his boy running around out there. And Luke has been pimping Keaton Mitchell since back in the spring. Um, I had Anthony on two years ago. I think we had a 20th anniversary for Purple Rain. And then I went looking around for a picture of me and Anthony Mitchell because I have this grainy picture that Bobby Nick took the day that he made the big play in Nashville. And it's not a really great quality picture to share. So I was trying to find one where we're smiling. And there he is on the back of Purple Rain with WWE Hall of Famer and former WNST intern Stacey Keebler, along with Mike Flynn and Kim Herring, whom I love, my all-time favorite Ravens, uh, there. Anthony Mitchell, your boys made you famous again. I saw you on Sports Center returning <laughs> interceptions, man. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, it took my son to put on the bring out some clips that I was looking for for a long time, man. Does your boy know that you, you had a couple interceptions in the NFL or no? I, I, I used to tell him, but I never had the footage. <laughs> <laughs> like they, got... they, they, they see uh, my end of my balls at home. They got interception on them, but they never seen the footage till now. It took him to do what he did for somebody to bring out the footage of me actually take, pick, uh, picking off Peyton Manning. Is that something later in your life that you're like, could I call the Ravens? Would somebody have a copy? I mean, did your family not DV? Because I, I have old I, videotapes and DVDs that I used to show on my bus trips of the big games, of the Tennessee game. I mean, all of that stuff is I, – I figured you would have it or pictures on the wall. I did, or whatever. and I, I call, I'd have called the Ravens a couple times trying to get them to give me those game footage. I have. Really? I have. Well, I got a DVD yeah. I'll give you of all the playoffs, brother. I mean, if you still got a DVD player, I mean, we're all fancy now with YouTube, and it's got to be on my phone or it's not real, right? Right. Right. We got to find a way to convert it over to uh, a, a USB or something. Well, look, man, I want to have like a real deep dive with you on your boy because when I had you on – it's so about two and a half years ago. We were like in the plague. I looked it up. I mean, you came in for, I don't know, somebody went in the ring of honor. Maybe it was Billick when Billick went in. I reached to you yeah. or whatever. And I, I've seen you at various things over the years where we've been in a room together because of the Ravens and you come home. And I mean, we lost Goose, right? I mean, I was down at the bullies thing that they did when they shot the video that night and we lose Goose a couple weeks later. So I've reached to so many of you and you guys, I mean, I feel like family with some of you. I mean, with Kyle Richardson here and people that I reach to, not as media celebrity come on my show, but just like I feel like I, I've known you my whole life. And then your boy right. puts you back in this spotlight. But two years ago, you were telling me, my boy's a hell of a football player. So let's rewind to all of this because I've talked about you a lot this week and the fact that you were going to be on. And I found this picture of us with Stacy Keebler. I don't remember the picture. It's on the back of my book. It's crazy. But right, I, I right, talked right. about you a little bit and people are like, was Keaton Mitchell alive when dad made the big play in the white Nashville and Al Del Greco and all that. And I Googled it and I'm like, no, no, no. Anthony's making babies right around maybe March, April, May after the Super Bowl, right? So, like I said, let's start at the beginning here of the birth of your son and where you were because, like, you were a Raven player. I was writing Purple Rain when your son was conceived. Like, literally, it was spring of 01. Right, right. My oldest was here. 
which he's a he's a heck of a ball player too. He just having the uh the injury bug right now with his wrist. He just had to uh get his wrist, surgery on his wrist, but he should come back. I I think he's gonna continue with football. But man, uh, it was just one of those deals to where, you know, he came in afterwards, and 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 him and his brother just always competed growing up, and it, it's it's crazy. It's just you know being a single dad. I uh I had him since they was about. Late elementary school, became a single parent and, and just continued to work. I never I never made it feel like a job school. Because if you got guys in the NFL making mistakes, so is kids. And so they just fell in love with the sport because it never felt like a job school. For you, uh, give everybody a sense of your real life. What, what's an old football player who played a couple years in the league and, you know, maybe a borderline pension in regard to the league and being a former player and having a ring, right? I mean, and having a right. memory that we all remember. I mean, like, you were a part of one of the really awesome things in my life, in our life. And all these years later, I've been on the radio 32 years. I've owned the station 25 years now. It's crazy, right? Um and what happened to you? You're you're an Atlanta guy. You went to a small school in the South. Give everybody a sense of your life upon exiting the NFL and becoming a single parent. Because I, I mean, we could do a whole book on the challenges between the last time we saw you and now your boy in the league as to how this happens. Because everybody's trying to raise a good kid. Everybody's trying to have a good life. And not everybody got to play in the league and have that. But then you got to go have a real life and have a job and make a life for yourself after it's over with because you didn't make Ed Reed's money. Right, right, right. So for me, it, it was one of those deals to where, you know, I sacrificed. Everything became about my boys. And um, and so just making sure they're in the right spot, in the right situation because, you know, bringing up two boys is sometimes it could be hard and you, they could uh, rear off to the wrong direction. But – I had two good ones, and, and I started training. I, I, I had a, a track team. I started coaching um, park and rec. And so both of my boys ran for my track team. You know, of course, uh, you know, both of them were fast. Uh, Keith got some records in the 60 and some of the indoor meets. And, you know, he his team ended up being ranked. Both of their teams used to go to nationals all the time. But, you know, it, it just came to where when you become a single parent, you got you to gotta sacrifice for your kid. And it all it all became about them. Because for me playing football and being away from them so much from traveling and, and going to camps and the off-season workouts, when I was when I was playing, regardless if I was a single parent or not, when I was playing, I said, um, when I finish football, it's gonna be all about my kids. And that's what I did. It, it was all about my kids. And so and, and until they went off to college and and I'm talking about high school, it was it still was all about them. So at the end of the day, you know, with them watching them grow up. And seeing Keaton do what he's doing, y'all just got a taste of what he could do, man. Y'all just got a taste of what he could do. Well, tell me about the fun of getting him into college and going to college games and being a guy who played at that level where, I mean, God, if your kids didn't make the NFL, it would, you know, I mean, when they put, I have a, a dear friend of mine whose son played hockey and played at a high level, but didn't make it into the NHL. Um, That's no crime. You played with a lot of guys didn't play in the league that were hell of a ball player. And, right. uh, so did your boy. Right. So, uh, right. but, but getting to this level and having a Sunday, having one day where things go right now, there might be. 10 years of things that could go right for him, right? I mean, you you know what that right. pathway could be for anyone. He might be Terrell Davis, right? I mean, literally, we don't know. You believe he he could be that, right? And But to right. see this on one day on Sunday, run me through your day on Sunday because I was a single parent. I was a parent at 15. I raised my son in front of, I mean, anybody, anybody that's ever listened to me knows about me raising my son. Um, I can't imagine my son one day in the NFL and, and certainly for – what you've done in your life to, to witness this. And the first question was, was your dad around? And, and where were you on Sunday? Oh, that, you know, cause he came off with a little nagging injury. And so I like, they ain't going to play him that much. I'm, I'm a, I, I, I sit at home this game. I didn't think he was going to play that much. So I was at home scrambling because I got Paramount and it was like, uh, it'd be shown on Paramount CBS. And so oh no, up no. CBS, you it, oh. it wasn't on. And so I'm calling people, hey, do y'all got the NFL Network? Do y'all have this? Do y'all have that? Because I was, I refused to get the YouTube. I, I, just, I just, I got every stream. And so my brother called me and said, look, it's on this. Download it. So I was able to download it on my phone. 
and mirror image it on my big screen. So my brother came over, so me and him was sitting there watching the game, and and I, I sent the reporter a screenshot of my conversation. In a fa- I'm in the fantasy league, and my best friend used to come. We my my college having homecoming. He used to come home uh, two. He used to come stay with me two days early before homecoming, so he could watch my son play. Watch my son's play, and he was like, eh, "He's a dog," and he because he played running back. He said, "Eh." He he's legit, and so when when we doing our fantasy draft, he drafted him right before I did, and so when 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 he when he drafted him after the first two carries of the game, I text everybody in my fantasy group. I said he gonna break a long one today. I called it after his second carry. I said because me watching him, any t- for the most part, this is the NFL. We're up to this point. When he had two carries like that, he usually go for a 50 or 80 yarder. So I, I, when he had two carries like that, he usually he usually break a decent run. And so when he had his two carries, I text everybody in my uh, fantasy group and say, hey, he, he might break alone one a day, fellas. And sure enough, I'm sitting there watching it, streaming it. I got a friend that went to grew up, childhood friend grew up in Tennessee. He was watching it live. So soon as he broke, he called me. I haven't seen it. I was two plays behind him. I like, he like, hey, you ain't seen it? I said, boy, get off my phone. And I hung up on him. Because you're watching it. Plays, on, like, your phone was streaming it, right? Right, right, right. But when he called me, I had to, I had a, a phone I don't use streaming it. So my, my, my original phone was working. But the thing is, when he called me, I haven't seen the play because it was two plays behind. And so he called me as soon as it happened because he watching it live. I'm streaming it. Streaming it slower than live. i like, man, get off my phone. And my, yeah, Mitch, my let me tell you there. what, man. I live downtown. This view that you see behind me, I, I lived outside the stadium. And, and I'd watch a baseball game with the window open, and I would hear the home run before the pitcher got rid of the ball. <laughs> and I'm right, like, no, right, it's right. like a spoiler. So you knew something good happened or did he tell you? So, be- yeah, I knew some good. He, yeah, I knew some good was going to happen because when I hung up with him, I said, tell something to happen. That's my brother's name. I said, I keep going to do something. That was Vince. He just called me going crazy. So he, he scattered the first run. It got like when he was weaving through it. And then the next one he went to the I say that's the one he was talking about. So yeah, it was a little spoiler alert for me, but it still was exciting to see when I when it when it happened. Run me through the last two years, because I mean I, you come in for reunions and whatnot, and um, I'm sure you've been in the suites and meeting fans and saying I'm Anthony. Here's my Super Bowl ring, and you've you've had a couple opportunities to do that. But your life the last couple years has been Atlanta, East Carolina, moving you know kids in college, track, rec, but, all I'm, the stuff that you do. Um, yeah. what's the new life for you? And the reason I'm asking is that picture I have with Stacey Keebler, Mike Flynn's in that picture. Mike Flynn's uh, family, his parents were with me all during those games. Cause I used to sit in the stands in the family section, you know, in the late nineties, turn of the century, yeah, New yeah. Jersey up in the stand before Twitter, before any of that. And his parents were at every game, every airport, every bar, every hotel, every pre, you know, like all of that. And there is a life for all of that, that like, I don't know what you thought about stage parenting your boy. If he plays five, six, eight years in the NFL, or maybe only five weeks, you never know. Right. Like you, you've dreamed of this, of him playing in the league, probably in the way for you where the last two years, what's happened to get him to this point? Because, you know, prospects are a dime a dozen sophomore, junior year of college, right? Like it, it really takes a very good set of circumstances undrafted for this to be able to happen. Right. Yeah, well, you know, he he's he's a sacrifice. You know, me and my wife, I'm new, I'm I'm newly married, going on four years now. But so she sacrificed with me now, and we we we'll be in East Carolina, North Carolina one week, then we will be down in Alabama with my other son the next. I mean, that next day. So we sometimes they play Thursday, Saturday. We be at both games. But for Keaton, I mean, he 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 just sacrificed. And I mean, he he don't party much. He don't he don't drink. You know, if he do, he's going to have one or two, you know, but at the end of the day, he know how to take care of his body. He he, he know how to rest, and, you know, and so 
but he's been doing this. And, and the thing is, he'll be overlooked because of his size. He's been overlooked. At high school, his junior year, he had 51 touchdowns rushing. 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 He had 49 in the regular season. I mean, you know, I think 46 regular season, then went to the playoffs. He had two in the state championship game that sealed the deal. And then his his senior year, he had, I want to say, 45 touch, rushing touchdowns. And so he it's a chip on his shoulder to where now I'm telling you on the biggest stage. Do not lose that chip on your shoulder. Continue to have it. And then now I text him right before the game. I said, if you get your opportunity, I always tell him, when he went into high school, he was a freshman. I thought he was the best back in high school, but he was behind a junior senior. I said, I don't care if you get one carry. Make that carry the best carry out of everybody the other day. And so he know how to capitalize on the opportunity because he don't know when he's going to have another opportunity after that one carry. So in his mind, he always know, make the best out of the one carry you get. And it would it would promote you to get more carries. Just like his freshman year in college, he went in, they had him fourth on the depth chart. And they played UCF. He had six carries to where all the other three running backs had 15, 16. He led the, he led the team in rushing with 66 yards on six carries. And I tell him, capitalize on each opportunity. If you can't capitalize on one opportunity, you can't complain about the rest of the opportunity you didn't get. Capitalize on that one and let everything else fall in place. Anthony Mitchell giving us just a great, um, we call these wise conversations. There's certainly some wisdom here. Uh, he once played for the Ravens. His boys now playing for the Ravens. Um, was a part of my life 25 years ago. You know, the barn, I'm out doing this crab cake tour now. We sit in the basement and have crabs. And um, when you think of your career, and if your boy asks you for wisdom, and I'm sure, I mean, come on, you guys are father and son together every day. I don't yeah. think it's it's some movie scene where he's like, Dad, tell me what it's like to play in the NFL. But if he were to ask you for the wisdom that you've gained and you could say it in a minute or two or five, what what is the wisdom you gain that has helped him, that's powered him? Love what you do, man. I, I tell him, love what you do. And believe in yourself because this is, it was a point to where I didn't have a confidence in myself because of being a free agent and not getting the opportunity and that everybody else get. And so I tell him, regardless, know who you are and, and believe in yourself and don't let nothing steer you off that. Because that's where a lot of guys fail. When you get an opportunity to play in the NFL, they came and got you because of what you did in the past. So continue to do what you do. Don't stare off of that. Like when he got hurt with the shoulder in the preseason, I asked him, what was you thinking? He said, I was trying to show him I'm tough. I said, no, they didn't come get you because you were tough. They came and got you because you were a game breaker because of the way you run a game. Don't reinvent who you are now. That ain't who they came and got you. And I tell him all the time, continue to do what you always done and, and, and let everything else fall in place. Control, control what you can control and then let everything else be what it's going to be. And and that's what he's he's learning to do. Believe in himself because I think he got the skill. I think he got the the pro mindset to be very very good in his sleep. And that's hard and from you, you were never fastest, tallest, biggest school, any of that. And you made it. I mean, you 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 didn't right. make it. You made an impact. You just didn't hang on the end of a roster for a minute or two. I mean, you played in the league and he was clearly going to be that guy too. And you knew that from the beginning because he was small, you know, all of that, right? That, and then undrafted, he was going to have to do it that way. And I think that's so hard. And look, one of the reasons I knew you, people say, how did you know Spencer Falau and Mike Flynn and, you know, the guys on the, the Bart Scott who hung around forever before he got a chance to play. And I'm like, man, those were the guys sort of like me. And those were the guys who were in the locker room first, last. They were normal guys. They weren't pampered. They didn't have a lot of money. They were happy to be there. They wanted to show that they were there early and they wanted to be nice to reporters because they didn't, they wanted to be recognized as um, trying harder. And then you got your chance. And then I come and say, you come to the bar tomorrow. I didn't have to say, hi, my name's Nestor. I knew who you were. But the hardest part for all of you was you weren't Rod Woodson. You weren't a first rate. You know, you were always going to have to wait for an injury, wait for an opportunity, wait for a blowout, wait, you know, wait for that chance. And for your boy, I mean, injuries and all that, we're halfway through the season. I mean, his impact 
didn't come until November the 5th, right? Like, that's the hardest thing in the world is sitting waiting your turn in life, right? Yeah, I tell them to always stay ready so you don't have to get ready. <laughs> always stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And, Boy, you were a red council. You, you're taking all that Billick, right? I mean, all of that Marvin, right? You got all of that. Yeah, right? yeah, Rex. yeah. yeah. I, we, we had some great coaches. I've been, I played up under some great coaches. I played under some special players. And, and just being able to take some of their knowledge and pour it to my boys, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing amongst itself. You know, I tell people all the time, there's, I don't know what type of players you have of today's game, but to have a Rob Wilson that I don't know if people know that week of the playoffs, that week of the Tennessee game, he made me take every rep. He didn't take a rep at practice. He And, and I'm, I'm doing special teams. I'm taking his reps. I'm like, Rod, get me one. Let me get a break. He said, no. He said, because we only as strong as our backups. And Rod's like, I'm, I'm ready to you. play, dude. I'm good. <laughs> and he, yeah. And, 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 and honestly, he sat on the sideline and watched me every single snap. Is there a better guy in the world than Rod Woodson? Like, I tell people that, all the time, like, that, no disrespect to Ray or Ed or any of the people I really like. Like, I like Joe Flacco a lot. I like Todd Heap. That is, I can go through the, the Marvin. I mean, I can go through these great uh, – Jack Del Rio. All these people I like in football, man, and because Rod was better than everybody – Ever I, I, and I, I would think, never know it. <laughs> I, you would, and and I think it was a special group. It was a special. I, mean, I hung with Chris McAllister. I love Dwayne Starks, uh, the Corey Harris, and me and Corey still we still communicate to this day. Kim Herring. I mean, Corey. Kim Herring's got me on the clear. Has he got you on the clear? Yeah. Hey. So <laughs> me and me me and Corey Harris, me and him did some stuff from Tennessee to Georgia together. I mean it. it that group was special, man. It was a bond off the field. We'd go to TGI Fridays every Friday and just sit down and eat and just talk. And, and we bonded in a way to where we knew what everybody was going to do before they did it. I mean, we had each other back. And so that's why I think that when you get a defense like that, a secondary like that, it's special. And, and Rob was a special guy. You know, he led the pack. You know, he was an influence to all of us, you know, being a savvy vet he was. And I just hope, you know, my son get that taste of of, of, of friendship, of playership, of uh, teammates of, as he come along, you know, because we, we didn't hate on each other. We wanted everybody to eat. It's enough to go out there. So, you know, I, I, I love the Raven organization. I love it for my son to be in it. Well, last thing for you, and I'll just say this, Lamar. Beckham, you know, the, the Linderbaum, Stanley, these really good Mark Andrews. I don't leave anybody out. I mean, hell, Aguilar and Bateman were first round draft picks too, right? Like, so, um, but right. your boy coming in and right now where JK's been hurt, Gus is great, but Gus isn't a, you know, Gus, Gus is the second half back the way they've designed it. And seven and two, Lamar, I've been talking to Luke about this, you know, for weeks. Um, since Dobbins got hurt, I said, man, they miss Mark Ingram from that 19 role because he blocked well, he saw well, he ran well. And I remember how special Ray Rice was for Joe Flacco and for that offense and being that. I see your boy and I see a little bit of Ray Rice in that way. And the pass protection and being Lamar's guy with that sleight of hand to either take it or take, take it and go and having guys, two guys that fast. DaCosta asked Lamar on the sideline, when your boy was running, he said, which one of you two is faster? I'd like for the Steelers defense to have to try to figure that out, or the Jaguars defense. After. So, man, your boy is in a weird position that he could have been a first-round draft blah, 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 and not been in a good scenario. He's now in a right. scenario where he can win a championship 10 weeks from now, and because he's around guys that are, I mean, Lamar's special. I know there's no question about that, right? Right, right. And so after round four, five, after round four, I didn't even want him to get drafted anymore. The ego, the ego of parents want their kids name called. But the business and, and understanding the NFL, after round four, I didn't want him to get drafted anymore. I did. I mean, I, it, it hurt him that he his name didn't get called, but I knew that you could get picked in a bad situation after round four. Did you tell him that? So, yeah, I say, I say, Keith, it's a blessing in in disguise, man. I say, trust the process. I say, cause I said, you're a free agent after round four anyway. 
you you cut a boy. I, I said, if you get picked in a bad situation, then you hey. And hey, hey man, it, there's a lot of bad situations in this league. <laughs> it is. It and there's is. a lot of it's opportunity tough. that comes with bad situations too, though. It right, does, right, right, right. I mean, it's it's you know it's. It goes hand in hand. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. But well, that was one of the I, hard parts I, for you. You would have gone to some crappy team. You might have played. You might have stunk. You might have never given, given a chance. You might have gotten hurt. The team might have stunk. You know, like anything could have happened there. Waiting your turn in Baltimore turned out to be a blessing for you. Yeah, that you, yeah, you had yeah. that experience, it, right? Yeah, it, it, it was, man. And, and, and I appreciate everything. And, and I love it. Like I tell people, everybody asks, who your team? The Ravens. Not even before my son got picked up on it. They always been since I left. And, you know, it, it, it's just one of those deals to where the organization treats you well. The fans treat you great. And uh, I just love the city. I All have right, a I friend you, down here from. I owe you a crab cake. I mean, now you're I know because a lot of times I get together. You're like, I'll oh, come to Atlanta. I was at the airport a couple weeks ago. We'll go to the varsity. We'll do. And like. And then I don't see you. You're going to be here. Like, I mean, I think a lot. I mean, your boys made an impact yeah. here. And um, it's very, very clear they believed in him to give him an opportunity. And, it, you know, here we go. Right. This is this is what yes, you've been sir. waiting for. Get, get my ticket for Sunday now. <laughs> and Thursday, just stay around. Two. Yes, I, I'll be I'll be the next two games. So, yeah. Well, good, man. Make, t tell him you get to sleep on the couch. So, uh, you know. All right. Yeah. I'm making breakfast. Works. Hey, man, always good to see you. Thanks for making time. I mean, you. your stories are – they're beautiful. They're beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to see this, man, really. Uh, thank you. I'm pulling for your boy. He is now the father of Keaton Mitchell. He's no longer Super Bowl champion and star of the divisional round game uh, back into 2001. His picture's hanging on the wall in our office because his picture's on the back of Purple Rain 1. If you see some guy that looks like 42 out there, it's probably Anthony Mitchell. Get on up here and support your boy. We don't want you watching on I'll phone. be up there Sunday, fellas. You don't need any YouTube TV. Anthony Mitchell's out of here. I'm Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. What a great, great, wise conversation and good story. Join us for a crab cake down at Lexington Market on Friday.